Hello, and welcome to Geek Week, the original HCAM show where we talk about the latest news and everything nerdy and pop culture, just to keep you up to date. I'm your host, Matt Clark. In addition to being the master control operator here at HCAM, I am passionate about movies, comic books, and video games, and they have been an integral part of my life ever since I was a kid. And now I'm here to share my love of everything nerdy with you. Today we're going to be talking about the recent release of the Star Wars movie, the, the new Star Wars movie, maybe you've heard of it. Um, and joining me today are uh, my good friend from high school, Brian Stafford, and Jim Cousins, the uh, station manager here at HCAM. So thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Always a pleasure. So um, obviously uh, the most recent Star Wars movie, The Rise of Skywalker, Episode Nine, came out um, almost two months ago now. Uh, so a little late than um, what I would prefer, but I'm trying something new this time, uh, a post-discussion. So let's start with that. What did you guys think of it? Let's, uh, let's, start, well, let's start with you, Brian. Uh, I, we've talked a little bit at length little uh, bit. off camera about this, but ultimately for me this movie was um, disappointing, I think. Uh, I went into it with limited expectations. Uh, early reviews weren't great. From I saw it late on, I think the first showings were Thursday. Mm -hmm. I saw it Saturday. Um, went, went in thinking it was going to be pretty bad um, from reviews, enjoyed it in the theater, and then every time I looked back on it, I had more and more questions. Mm -hmm. I, I disagreed with choices they made, and ultimately I kind of came away with, uh, eh, and that wasn't really what I wanted of going course. in. Of course, you know, as a fan, but, um, you know, it's what we got, and I think now we're just kind of living in the, the aftermath and discussing why and, and seeing where the franchise will go of in course. the future, yeah. And Jim, what about what about your thoughts? I actually, I kind of agree a lot with Brian. I, there was so much, you know, negative buzz when it was first starting. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that I went into that saying to myself, this is the last one. This is it. Mm -hmm. So all we're going to get, Carrie Fisher has died. There's no, no more Leia. They killed the character of Luke and the one before. Mm -hmm. And then this is the end. They've already said that. So I said to myself, I'm just going to enjoy what there is. I loved seeing the Emperor again. I don't care how ridiculous that is. I don't care how they don't explain how he survived. Um, there are so many like plot holes, and they cram so much stuff in. But I just enjoyed what I was able to see. You know, I loved, loved, loved seeing Luke Skywalker uh, in his X-wing again. Mm -hmm. You know, after what they did in the movie before that, with uh, so just every just all those things, I was able to just enjoy and put aside all of the problems with the script and the plot. I, I think that there's a fair amount, like you mentioned with Luke's X-Wing, there's a lot of, of moments that were, were definitely J.J. Abrams saying to the fans, like, here's all the stuff I think you like. Mm -hmm. And I think my main problem coming away is that in the theater, yeah, grinning, I love all of it, it's like, oh, this is super cool. And then it's like, wait a minute, isn't there a way we could have pivoted this and, and taken, someone brought up sp uh, about the X-Wing, um, if you had given an opportunity for um, when Luke originally is trying to leave Dagobah, Yoda takes the X-Wing out for him because uh -huh. he can't do it. And he, Yoda thrusts upon him, go forward and, and, and finish this journey, right? Yeah. If Rey, instead of having that same thing done for her by Luke, if Rey in, instead takes the mantle of responsibility and lifts the, the X-Wing herself, kind of overcoming what Luke was unable to do, I think that would have been a really nice growth point for her and a good development of their relationship. And while I loved it in the moment, it's a lot of those, I come back and go, mm, is there a way we could have pivoted this? Is there a way we could have had this scene have a little bit more impact uh, or make it a little bit more personal? Yeah. I think people have talked a lot about how Star Wars is a song and the song is supposed to rhyme, right? We see a lot of yeah. cyclical um, storytelling and I think that is important. You know, it, you're supposed to see a lot of this like rise and fall and rise and fall and the circle kind of never ends. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some moments where I kind of wish, all right, could we have twisted it? Could we make, you know, make it an oval maybe instead? Of, we yeah. can still circle back to the same point, but can we take a different path? Well, yeah. you know, I just like the, the X-Wing thing, mm -hmm. what I felt that was, Luke tried that and he failed. And now Luke got to try that and succeed. Mm, that's, I think that was kind of nice for that. That's, that's what I thought about yeah. that too. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I think, I think it, a lot of it, and I think those are all valid points, and that kind of comes down to a problem I have with the movie in general is who is the story about, right? Yeah. Are we are we putting uh, are we finally like putting a close on on Luke and on Leia and their story and bringing them to like a final point of closure, 
or are we telling a story about the new characters and weaving them into how do you know the old characters? And I think that between the three movies, they never really decide. Uh -huh. they, they, they do a fair about amount of flip-flopping of whether or not they want Luke to finally understand the Jedi or Rey to figure it out for him, if they want Leia to lead the resistance or have her pass along the torch, if they want Han to care or to run from responsibility, and that, that kind of, I mean, even the villain. It, do we want the villain to be Kylo or do we want the villain to be Emperor Palpatine? And in a way, right, again, cyclical, Palpatine was the villain for six movies. Right. So for him to not be the villain for three feels a little weird. But to shoehorn him into nine and have him not be the villain for seven and eight feels yeah. kind of wonky. And that, it, it feels like they just were trying to jam a bunch of square pieces into round holes and they shaved some things off and they puttied on some extra bits. And that's, yeah. it's gonna happen. But this one felt, uh, it was a rough landing, I think. Mm -hmm. It just seems to me that, um, I think the most widely received one amongst them all was episode seven, The Force Awakens. I think that one was mostly across the board like, oh, this was good. Yeah. Obviously not everyone feels the same way about anything in yeah. art, but. Um, there are plenty of haters of that movie too, um, but I think most most people agree that it was a, it was a good new Star it was, Wars movie. It was a it was a tried and true. I think the problems that I saw with the with episode eight and episode nine eventually they just didn't seem to know where they were going from the beginning. And in my opinion, when you're making a trilogy, especially when it's something big budget like Star Wars, you should know where you're going. And obviously, there were some like kinks thrown in when Carrie Fisher passed away. Yeah. Um, so they had to change their plans. Mm -hmm. But I still, I remember when the, the first trailer for The Rise of Skywalker came out and there was the Palpatine laugh at the very end. And everyone was like, oh, what? How? And I, that's mostly what I did. Yeah. But um, they never really explained how. And nope. it, I, I, again, I like Palpatine in that movie. I think he's goofy and, and fun, but also intimidating and scary. Uh -huh. um, but it, it does just seem to come out of nowhere. It, I think one of my... Um, for 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 the Force Awakens, I know a lot of the criticism mostly comes down to like, well, you just did New Hope, right? Yeah. I, mean, I yeah. think I think a lot of older fans, fans who had seen the original you know original trilogy in theaters when they came out, uh, people who grew up through um, like were kind of adults when the yeah. um, when the prequels came out, went, this is good, but you also kind of just gave me um, New Hope again, and I think they for both movies then tried to pivot a lot yeah. uh, to try and, you know, like mix it up. And some of that landed, some of it didn't. But to your point about um, never really getting answers to things, there's so many questions from just Force Awakens we still don't have answers to yeah. that really kind of, we don't know why Kylo's lightsaber is like that. They sold that as like a big point that he had a different, it was all crackly and like <laughs> lightning and they never talk about it. Mm -hmm. The Knights of Ren are a throwaway gag at best. Uh, yeah, that that one I had a, a a decent amount of grievous with, because it's like in the in episode seven they're like, oh, he's a knight, he's one of the Knights of Ren, and we're like, oh, cool, what are the Knights of Ren? And then they don't tell you ever. <laughs> and then they don't show up until they do. And then they but... lose, and none of them have lightsabers, and so uh, I think. But they, they're all force sensitive, supposedly. Right. And I and I like that they all have different weapons. That's it's cool. I like that. It's but... fun flavor, but. Do they choose those weapons? Do they make them themselves? Are they gifted to them by by Snoke? Like, what are we supposed to believe? And a lot of a lot of my grievances, I think about this movie too, is there was kind of a to to shift franchises a little bit and kind of uh, needle at Harry Potter. Harry Potter gets joked about a lot for. J.K. Rowling always comes back and says, "Oh, here's a fun fact you never knew about from the books: mm -hmm. the visual novel for The Force Awakens." Reveals so much information that either should have been in the movies, should have been should have been in nine, should have been in seven, eight, and nine, or just maybe don't write it down, because it's weird. And if you're not going to talk about it, why do it? Yeah. Janna is confirmed to be Lando Calrissian's daughter in those books. Wait, the the. Yup. Seriously, the the woman oh, from the from yes. episode nine. Yeah, the woman from episode nine, the other stormtrooper that changed in the books is confirmed to be Lando's oh daughter. Oh my god, that's which amazing! Which you'd think that would be an important story beat, and they have that one half-hearted line at the end of like, "Oh, what planet are you from?" And Billy D. Williams is like obviously kind of getting at something, but then they don't go anywhere with it. And you know, I, how does he know? 
Like, he just yeah. kind of guesses randomly, like, oh, you're from the same planet as me. And that's like me running into a person at the grocery store and saying, like, oh, what planet are you from? Earth? You might be my son. Oh, like, I, I don't, I, I, there's I'm a lot of, you, but. I guess, yeah. Um, it doesn't really have to matter, you know. Uh, <laughs> time being what it is. Now, so for me, mm -hmm. right, that whole thing about her being his son was clear as a bell on screen. I think, I think the way yeah. Lando said that, and some people are like, wow, is that creepy? But it was, it was like so understandable. It, it, he knew something mm -hmm. about her. But I think, I think that also gets into, one, personally, having grown up really loving Lando and Han's relationship, uh -huh. Billy D. Williams getting shafted and not getting to show up until episode nine. If you, I mean, he ran Cloud City. He was a an important member of the resistance. He was a general. He did all of these things. And to say that, like, he didn't come back and help out at all, and, like, we don't get to see, like, what struggles was he going through? Why didn't he uh, go get back into, like, smuggling in crime like Han did? You know what? You know why? You know why? Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't Peter Jackson who made these movies. That's fair. If he, if he made these movies, we would have 12 hours of movie That's, on and, the extended cut, ooh, rather gotcha. than being limited to six. Which so aggravating. They don't do like longer I, movies I, for this. I also think, and a couple people have brought this up to me in different aspects of, I know that we set up the every, every part of the, the, the saga is three movies. Mm -hmm couldn't have done like four <laughs> did we really I, again and this is something that can like can you imagine the, what, the, like, the backlash tried and true of people being like no, this like, is what lucas they demanded about it oh, they yeah. would like to have done that but they felt restricted by it and i yeah. there's there's a lot of weird you know inconsistencies in in like i think rules of this is a very old franchise when they got it they had to play ball with the fans and the fans i think take a lot of importance but Something you get into, too, and I think this is kind of, for whatever reason, I don't know, I mean, maybe this is me being biased as, like, a science fiction fan, but Peter Jackson took The Lord of the Rings. I don't know as many people who are like, oh, I, I know The Lord of the Rings. There's a few, I mean, there's people who, you know, anytime you mention it, bring up the Silmarillion and uh -huh. things like that. Yeah. I've, been, I've been reading into a bit of it right, lately. Yeah, and Peter Jackson kind of took this and said, I'm going to do everything I can to bring as much flavor out of it. And for Star Wars, I think the fans are the ones that kind of took a lot of the flavor out of it. You know, we've had so much time between trilogies to mull on it. We had the, the books written after the original trilogy that then were made no longer canon. We had the prequels and everyone's uh -huh. reactions to that as guttural and disappointed as they were to then take and say, I didn't like this. Clone Wars with its rough beginning and ultimately like a very strong ending of, uh -huh. uh, of a series getting to see new things, the fans have really kind of dragged a lot out of this. And then I think we get to a point where you can't please everybody. And if you try to, I think you're going to stumble. And I kind of feel like that's where this movie landed, was that it was trying to please as many fans as possible, but in a way kind of shunted some things aside that I think should have been more important. Well, I think they shunted some things aside because there was so much to put in there. That's I true. mean, it took so long to undo everything that Ringan did in episode eight. But I don't think we know? should have taken a lot of that away. I think that's another, having two directors that did not agree about the vision of this story. Yeah. Now, you've just gotten to the point. I think the major problem with this, the fans are the fans, and it's, a, it's crazy how, um, how antagonistic people get over mm -hmm. their favorite things in life nowadays. If, if I can just add one thing to that, I have always said, the fans are the worst part about anything. Yeah. If you yeah. think of all those series that are like, oh, this is like bad, it's like, no, it might be like not great, but the fans are what make it like toxic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's, there's a lot of... I agree. And so I think the problem is with Bob Iger, because he is the one that let Kathleen hire directors for each, that are different for this movie. And Rian Johnson, mm -hmm. to encapsulate that entire movie, which is a little bit of feel, when he was saying, why did Kylo tell Rey that her parents were nobody? And the reason he told her that was because in The Empire Strikes Back, when Luke heard who his father was, it was the hardest thing for him to hear. Mm -hmm. So Rey hearing what she heard was the hardest thing for her to hear. And I personally feel that to make a decision only based upon how you want like a plot to go and how you want to surprise somebody, how you want to challenge. That to me, I don't agree with that. And I think if you want to do that, get your own characters because these characters have been set. 
and I think that they should have, he should have continued on um, rather than say, I'm going to break everything and surprise you. Well, I don't, I don't know how much, I don't think that we, in the discourse following The Last Jedi, I don't think The Last Jedi really breaks a lot of what The Force Awakens left behind. Because what we have at the end of The Force Awakens is no provisional government for the entire, for the entire galaxy. First Order's on the rise. The Resistance is about to die. We start in media res, the Resistance fighting back, and mm -hmm. then we just follow them trying to flee and not become extinguished. Mm -hmm. Do I think Act 2 is rough? Do I think going to um, the, the casino planet is a weird take? Yes, I, definitely. But at the same time, I think the third act of Last Jedi lands right, where, right about where it should, a final standoff, a sacrifice to save everything that we should get, uh -huh. and Luke's ultimate passing. Uh -huh. Then we, we have new characters introduced. We have, a new, um, we have new footing coming into the new movie, and I think that that's fine, right? Like the, the First Order's committed a lot of resources. They've lost some starships, but ultimately they're still... Uh, they're still a military, right? The resistance is like four X-wings and some duct tape uh -huh. at that point. So we have a lot of like scraping by, not getting a lot. You can see that they've got like Poe, like two Y-wings and like a single Corellian cruiser. Uh -huh. Like there wasn't a lot that they had starting the Rise of Skywalker. And I think that the Last Jedi does do. A, I'm sorry, yeah, the Last Jedi does do a really solid job of continuing with that, um, with that growth because it, Force Awakens. Kylo really just kind of, he was antagonistic. He had to deal with his parents, and him and Rey, for whatever reason, didn't like each other. And we don't know whether or not that's orders from on high. We don't know what's going mm -hmm. on with Snoke. Okay, so I'm just going to give you one example of why I think. Sure. I think, okay? Yeah. J.J. Abrams made Kylo with a mask mm -hmm. because he's trying to be Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. The first thing mm -hmm. Rian Johnson makes Kylo do is get rid of that ridiculous mask. Mm -hmm. And the first thing Kylo does in The First Awakens is solder that mask back together. Is there any explanation for that? No. It's because the director was telling mm -hmm. Rian that I don't like what you did there. Right. And it was wrong, so I'm going to undo that. And that, I think, just... If you, and again, I think that there's a way, right? Like, if you want to have that happen, if you, if the directors disagree, there's a way to say, Kylo believed a thing, Kylo broke away from that thing, and then Kylo went back to his original point in a narrative mm -hmm. and have Kylo kind of grow with yeah. all of these choices. And I think just ultimately through even all three of them, he doesn't really. Yeah. No, I, he I, doesn't. However, I mean, we, we said, we were talking earlier about Mark Hamill, right? Mm -hmm. If Mark Hamill is telling Rian Johnson, you're doing this character wrong. If Mark Hamill says, I had to pretend in my mind it was Luke's nephew that was doing this and not Luke Skywalker, Scar Skywalker, you're doing something wrong. I, I don't know how many issues I have with Luke in Last Jedi. I'll be honest. Yeah. I, I think that Luke is, is pretty solid. A lot of my problems with The Last Jedi come down to, I think that Ryan tries to make a pretty he tries to make a point that while valid doesn't fit the standard narrative of the of, of Star Wars, right? Mm -hmm. So Star Wars is mostly that the classic binary good versus evil. It's mostly about uh, the people fighting against a government, a government being tyrannical, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Ryan Johnson tries to, uh, in the middle of Last Jedi, tie in the well, corporations also have an issue in this, and that's fair, and that's a valid a valid point, and something we could definitely explore in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But it's it's something that. We've never talked about it really before. It's a point probably better fitting to the Clone Wars era, if anything. Mm -hmm. You could tell a more interesting story about like who's making battle droids and who's making the ships for the clones and why are they the same company and like yeah. that's an issue. It's really tough to say the people who make X-Wings and the people who make TIE Fighters, those people all profit in the same way and they don't care, which it really closed off a lot of the how small is this? Like, are there just a lot of people that actually don't care about mm. this fight? Because then it seems like we're supposed to care. That, that whole part feels like, while I agree with you that there's definitely a narrative you can tell here, it's mm. not one that had a good footing to, to begin the conversation. So it feels really out of left field, as important as I think it could be if you told a story about that. Yeah. But an 11th act of reveal of like, oh, but there's also corporate greed here. Like, we don't have time for this. We have yeah. so many other tasks to get into. That's why 
not talking about the actual, like, within the movie, mm -hmm. right? Just talking about the movie. I mean, the first scene in The Last Jedi mm -hmm. was, to me, offensive with what Luke did with the lightsaber, right? I mean, in the first movie, that thing was like this mystical object. And don't you wish we knew how Maz got that thing? Yeah. But, and then in the second movie, the first thing out of the gate, he throws away like a piece of garbage, right? And then in the first thing in the third movie, that, ha that helmet gets rebuilt. Mm -hmm. These are things that directors are making directorial decisions mm -hmm. based not, in my opinion, yeah. on what these characters in these situations should be doing, but what they either want to surprise us or they want to really jump on the nostalgia strings or whatever they're doing. And it's, they're not thinking about the right thing, in mm -hmm. my opinion, which is why they're not great. I... I definitely think that the nostalgia and trying to play up the fan service, one of the big ones about the Rise of Skywalker that I know fans were, were talking about of, Chewie gets the medal at the end. <laughs> Chewie yeah. never got a medal in New Hope. Chewie never complains about not getting a medal. <laughs> Chewie never talks about that medal. It's not a point of frustration for him. He roars in victory at the end of New Hope. I mean, I assume, I guess I don't speak Wookiee yeah. and like, fine. but. For that weird scene of, one, why does Maz Kanata have a medal from the old, like, rebel alliance lying around to give to Chewbacca? Did she? I thought that Leia had the medal. Oh, and is, Maz is that took it Maz from Leia. takes Leia's Leia, medal? Because Leia was looking and, at it before she died. Uh -huh. And then Maz, yes, and then Maz took it from Leia. In my, in Which, my memory. And that's, I've only seen it twice so far. I, I only saw it oh. once. I honestly don't remember. Yeah. yeah, I think she had it. That's, I mean. Because I think, it was, excuse me, I think it was Han's medal. I it, think oh. Leia had Han's oh. medal. And then and it, she gave it to Chewie. See, but that's something, because it, it feels like, or, and I know a lot of people afterwards were talking about, like, oh, Chewie finally gets his medal. Mm -hmm. In that case, if, if, if your memory serves you right, which again, I've only seen it once, so I, I believe that, then that's a much more touching, like, hey, I have one final like piece of memorabilia yeah. from your greatest friend, your <laughs> longest term ally. Yeah. Here's the last thing we have from Han that Leia held on to. Here you go, you deserve it. That's way more touching than like, hey, remember that time you didn't yeah. get a prize? <laughs> like, so what that are we is, doing? But guess what? Mm -hmm. It was poorly explained. It was, and I, th yeah. and, uh, oh. my, my big criticism, um, I think, for The Rise of Skywalker, and gets into a lot of the poor explaining, really, too much dialogue when we don't need it, never enough when we did. Uh -huh. Kylo Ren's final line of dialogue is father, or his dad. I think it's dad. He says yeah. it to Han. Yeah. He then fights the entire final battle, fights against the Knights of Ren, mm -hmm. kills all of them, yeah. helps Rey, gets thrown. I think his, maybe his last line is him going, ugh, as he gets hit <laughs> into a rock and yeah. supposedly dies. He says nothing while sacrificing himself. He says no final words on his deathbed, and he disappears. That is the worst way to end a character you wanted to have be a focal point. And right. that, that hurt, right? Like, again, to that... You really need, how is he feeling? He's making a lot of massive changes in his life right now because yeah. he, uh, not even the ghost of his dad, as far as we know, Lahan was not a force ghost. That was a memory. That was a memory yeah. or a hallucination or whatever it was. I mean, I he was, was stabbed a, in. I think it was a force projection of Kylo's memory and how he wanted that interaction to mm -hmm. go. And that's, oh, if that's the case, like, that's so good. He's, he'd just been stabbed in the stomach. He'd had a lot of things happen to him. I think that scene actually worked really well. Him saying dad and then Han and with I know is a really great callback. Yeah, I, I love that scene. That, I think that I think that worked pretty well. And then like they just took Kylo and they threw him in the garbage, and they didn't. There were. I think that is the worst failing, like plot wise, mm -hmm. of not explaining where that I went. But you know what? I don't really care about Kylo because I'm I'm one of the old guys. Mm -hmm. I'm from the original series, and I, I'm there for the main characters. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Which I mean the old for characters, sure. right? So like. It was, it was like, okay, I got it. You know, he came back, he's good, and that's nice. And I think that, like, why did he fade away so fast? I think it was because it was to keep Ray from bringing him back to life and then keep going back that's and forth a, forever. One, that's a very good <laughs> yeah, point, because yeah. that does bring in a weird cycle. And also, I mean, this, this trilogy, to that point, really wanted to hammer home, 
Jedi do fade away into weird ghosts. <laughs> We're just going to talk about that for a hot second, and by that I mean all of them, apparently. apparently all of them do it all the time very quickly, and it's not weird at all. Yeah. And I think if we just said, like, I don't know, New Hope had one weird scene and we all forgot about it, or, like, none of us talk about it, that's fine. Uh -huh. You're kind of allowed to say a movie came out in 77 and they didn't have the budget to leave a dead Alec Guinness on the ground. Yeah. He didn't want to lay there and get walked over. They kept tripping in the Darth Vader suit. I don't care what the explanation is. Have him fade away for continuity bit. Maybe they filmed on different days. I don't know, but that was a weird. That was a yeah. weird choice. I mean, that the original Star Wars movie is a lot of weird choices that it all came together to do an amazing movie. Exactly, it, it's a an excellent story. I think it's one of those you can't recreate that magic as much yeah. as I think we've even George Lucas going back and fixing all of them. You can't recreate the magic of the originals. No, and what I, I've always said, the most amazing thing, mm -hmm. if that movie was released today in theaters it would not look dated like other no. movies of its time, like Flash Gordon. Yeah, right? oh, right. Like other things. Like, it was amazing how he, except for some of the hairstyles, like mm -hmm. Han's hair. Sure. You know, it's amazing the, how timeless that movie is. Mm -hmm. All the model making is phenomenal. All yeah. the Foley work is excellent. Like, it's, it's really, it is a movie that can stand the test of time. Exactly. I, I think most of the trilogy, maybe excluding Return of the Jedi, it's a personal choice. Uh, <laughs> We get, in, we get into that a lot. We have yes. our friend group has a lot of discussion about it. Where the originals six. rank is a uh, contentious point, mm -hmm. I think. But but that's actually why I wanted both of you on because, um, like, you're just two completely different generations of Star Wars fans. Mm. But you're two of the biggest Star Wars fans I know. Yeah. The only other person I would say uh, would be one of my old roommates from college. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is a huge Star Wars fan. But um, like obviously the the prequel trilogy came out when we were kid, little yeah, kids. Yeah, we grew up through it. But yeah, you grew up I was, the original. I was 13 when Star Wars came out, and mm -hmm. I saw it in my local, my little town's movie theater nine times. Yeah, in the movie theater. But you guys have the advantage of these movies and the TV shows now are all being made mm -hmm. for you rather yeah. than you know for for me. Right, and I think that's a, an important power of the franchise is to to bring new generations yeah, in right. instead it's, of it's timeless. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that's just about all the time we have. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't get to cover nearly as much as I hoped. But maybe we can do more of this sometime. There's mm -hmm. plenty more Star Wars coming up. Very true. Uh, so I'd like to thank both of you for uh, coming on the show and talking about this. I think it was a good, it was a good episode. Um, and I'd like to thank our audience um, for joining in. And I hope we didn't confuse you too much. And, you know, join us again for the next episode of Geek Week. And don't forget to never be afraid to geek out about the things you love. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.